we can now go on to our first talk, uh, close to my own heart, really. Um, I'm pleased to introduce Professor John Dillon from uh, Nine Wells Hospital in Dundee. John, like me, is a liver specialist, and we've worked together in a number of areas over many years. John has a very uh, uh, varied and a uh, star-studded reputation, really, in various uh, liver fields. Uh, his work in hepatitis C, uh, eradicating it, so trying to eradicate it in taste side, uh, very successful, and also very good work on um, a early detection of liver disease using automated uh, screening of blood tests is very innovative. But John's also uh, been a great supporter of um, alcohol prevention work and has been on the steering group of SHAP for, for, for a number of years. And uh, he's going to talk about some of the work which he and Peter Rice were instrumental with, along with Eric, on alcohol-related liver disease. Over to you, John. Thank you very much, Alistair. It's a pleasure to be here uh, to speak uh, kindly of Eric and all the, our dealings with him. Um, I'm reminded of my first meeting properly with Eric and Peter. Um, it was up here in Nine Wells. Um, suddenly in front of me was a nice cup of coffee, a nice chocolate cake, and I had a strong feeling that my arm was about to be firmly twisted up behind my back. And true enough, it was. Um, Eric had conceived and persuaded Scottish government that we should be thinking about standards around what we do for liver disease in patients who um, use excess alcohol and um, the alcohol the review of the alcohol policy was going on at the time and Eric was trying to engineer um, or in fact was encouraged by the civil servants that there would be some guidance around liver disease within uh, that document and as you're all aware liver disease while it only affects 20 percent of people who uh, drink alcohol to excess it causes a disproportionate amount of the morbidity and mortality related with liver disease and of all the people that are identified as using excess alcohol we have very disparate guidelines about what to do and it depends rather randomly as to which door you have to enter into this process as to whether you get assessed for liver disease or not, or whether you get completely ignored. And that's clearly a missed opportunity, particularly as we come to this age of personalized medicine where we can um, individualize risk and potentially change people's behavior once they know their individual risk rather than the more generic advice that we're more used to giving out. And so there was a big opportunity here to improve the quality of care and move things forward. So Eric engineered a large group of people, facilitated the meetings, uh, brought all the stakeholders together with a sort of effortless ease that I'm sure wasn't was what appeared on the surface of the water, but I'm sure he was working furiously underneath to make it all happen uh, and brought disparate partners that would normally be in the same room together uh, into the same place and created the guidelines. And I'm not allowed a slide, but I am allowed to show you what the guidelines look like. Eric's uh, particular contribution was to pick the front cover and design the front cover, that jigsaw piece of putting the whole liver back together again, which is what the aim was. And these guidelines have been very useful in terms of setting out what the standard should be of collating evidence together. So for non-experts who are working in fields focused around the alcohol excess or alcohol addiction without necessarily having as much knowledge as Alastair and I do about the liver itself, they knew what they should be doing to be safe. And that was a huge short-term contribution. Here was a concise document that brought um, the known information together. And I think it sets that standard going forward that hopefully as we move towards early detection of liver disease, increasing awareness of the need to look at people as a whole and all of the damage that can be done, these guidelines will still be useful going forward to achieve that. So on behalf of the hepatological community, all the people that are going to be helped by these guidelines, Eric, I'd like to say thank you. And with that, I'll shut up. Over to you, Alistair. Thank you very much, John. Uh, indeed, it was it was a great piece of work and is still um, being used and uh, st still more to be done in terms of getting it more widely used, I have to say.